Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor. Here we're going to work on this circuit here, which has a 3 milliamp current source, a 10 volt voltage source, another 10 volt voltage source, and then a nice assortment of resistors. These are all in the kilo ohm range, so different values. And the, the entire uh, circuit is hooked up to a load resistance we're calling R sub naught. Now, um, Notice this has an arrow through it. Now that's a symbol that you may or may not have seen up to now in circuits. If you see a um, resistor with an arrow through it like that, that means it's adjustable, right? That's all it means. So if you have any kind of circuit where you need to adjust the resistance of something and you have to have a knob or something like that, then you would draw the resistor with an arrow through it like that. So that just means we can adjust the value of R0. And the question is, well actually there's two questions. What is the value of R0 needed for maximum power transfer to R0 and the second question is, once we meet that condition, once we adjust it properly, how many watts are actually delivered to R0? So we're going a step further. We're finding out uh, what is the value of R0 needed for max power transfer, and once we're there, how many watts are actually being delivered? So it's a little bit uh, beyond what we did before. So the first thing we need to do is look at this and realize that the value of this resistor needed is going to be uh, equal to the Thevenin resistance of the rest of this circuit here from basically this point on. We find the Thevenin resistance, then that's the value of R0 needed. So we start thinking about how are we going to calculate the Thevenin resistance, right? Now we could, you know, take this out and hook a test source up like we did before. We could do that. Um, but I'm noticing, though, that in this case, this is a little bit easier, really, because there are no uh, dependent sources. There's no triangle sources anywhere. And so because of that, what I could do is I could short circuit all of the voltage sources that would eliminate these two, and I could open circuit all of the current sources, I only have one of them. So all I'm going to be left with is this nice, really easy looking resistor network that I can do series parallel combinations to find out what that Thevenin resistance is. So that's the way we're going to do this one because it just looks to be the easiest. So what we're going to do first is redraw the circuit directly underneath with these modifications in place. So this guy's a current source, he's gonna be open circuited and disappear. The rest of it we're gonna draw right below. So here's a resistance here, here's a resistance on top, here's a resistance here. This voltage source is now short circuited, so it, it just put a line there. Here's the resistor there, here's a resistor there. The, re the voltage source there is short circuited. And then what we're going to do here is, this is terminal A, and this is terminal B because you know the load resistance is really hooked up between you could you could almost label terminals A and B here and it's hooked up between it so we're, we're wanting to find the, the resistance looking back so we kind of take our load resistor away disconnect it from the circuit and we're analyzing what lies before it so the values of these resistances are as follows alright so this is 4 kilo ohms this is 8 kilo ohms this is 20 kilo ohms. This is 2.5 kilo ohms. This is 10 kilo ohms. So this is a really simple resistive network that I know that I can use series and parallel combinations to take care of. So working on the back end, uh, these guys here, these are in series so we can just add them together. So let's redraw the circuit down below. 8 plus 4 is 12. So let's just put a 12 kilo ohm resistance uh, here and then we'll just redraw the rest of the circuit really quickly. This is 20 kilo ohms. This is 2.5 kilo ohms. This is 10. And this is A. And that's B. Alright, so now what we have next is we have these two resistors in parallel, 12 and 20. So let's go work on these guys here. So the equivalent resistance here when you have two resistances, is product over sum. We've done that many times. So 12,000 times 20,000. That's the product over 12,000 plus 20,000. So when you do the product there and you divide by the sum, you'll get 7,500, which is 7.5 kilo ohms, right? So Let's go ahead and redraw this guy. This resistance resolves to 7.5 kilo ohms. And here at the top, we have 2.5 kilo ohms. 
and this guy here is 10 kilo ohms and this is A and this is B. So here we're making progress. All right now this stuff here these are in series so we can just kind of work on these guys. Um, so this is going to be 10 right 10 kilo ohms when you add these guys together. So let's go redraw the circuit over here. And so what you're really going to have is 10 kilo ohms, that's what we said it was equal to, and that's in parallel with the other 10 kilo ohms that we already had. And this is terminal A, and that's terminal B. So here you have two guys in parallel, and again, to find the equivalent resistance, it's just product over sum. So is 10 times 10 over 10 plus 10. And when you do this, you're going to get 5 kilo ohms. You get all this, you get a 5, the units you're working with are kilo ohms. So really what you have is 5 kilo ohms connected between terminals A and B. What does this tell you? All we've done is we've disconnected our load and we have short circuited and open circuited our sources and kind of eliminate them. And then we're looking back trying to find out what the resistance of this network is. And when we do all of it, we figure out that it's 5,000 ohms, 5 kilo ohms. So this means that what we found is that the Thevenin resistance is 5 kilo ohms. And that means that for max power transfer, we want R0 to also be equal to 5 kilo ohms for max power transfer. And again, what this means is if I hook up you know, something different than that, if I hook up 4,000 ohms, I'm going to get less power delivered than the maximum that's possible. If I hook up something greater, like 6 or 7 kilo ohms, I'm not going to get the exact amount of maximum power that can be delivered to the load. Only when I hook up 5,000 ohms or adjust the knob for this adjustable resistor to 5 kilo ohms will I get the maximum power that's possible to be delivered to a load given what the circuit looks like. Right? Now the second part of this question, as you might guess, is how many watts is delivered to the load? When you, when you achieve the state of maximum power transfer. So first part was, what do we need to hook up for max power transfer, or what do we need to adjust for? Second part is, how many watts is actually delivered? All right, so in order to do that, uh, what we need to really do is take this load resistance that we now know we need to have and substitute it in here, and then basically resolve the circuit again to find out how many amps are flowing through that guy, and then once we know how many amps are flowing through it, I squared R is going to tell us how many watts it's absorbing, which is the same as how many watts is being delivered to that from the remainder of the circuit. So what we're going to do now is switch panels here and redraw the original circuit one last time. All right, so what we have here, this is our current source. We'll label it in a second. In parallel with that, we had a resistance. And then up here, we have another resistance. And here we have another resistance. We had a source down here like this. And then we have a source across the top and a source here. And then we have a source here. And then finally, we have our load resistance over here. And if you want to think of terminals A and B, that's fine. We can put those there too. Now let's label everything really quickly to make sure that we're all on the same page. So here we have, this is three milliamp source. This is four kilo ohms. This is eight kilo ohms. This is 20 kilo ohms. This is 10 volts. This is 2.5 kilo ohms. This is 10 kilo ohms. And this is 10 volts. And the value of the resistance we're hooking up because we've calculated what we need, this is 5 kilo ohms as well. So what we need to do is analyze the circuit, find the mesh currents everywhere, and then we'll have our answer. All right, so what we need to do is, is analyze the circuit, much like we've always done, and we want to try to find the mesh currents everywhere. I just, I just like that method better anyway. So here's uh, I sub 1, here's I sub 2, this is another mesh, I sub 3, and this is the final mesh, I sub 4. And notice what we're really doing. We're going to solve all this stuff, and we're going to figure out ultimately what I4 is equal to. And since we're caring about the resistor that's on the outside, once we know what I4 is, it's just I squared R, I4 squared R, we know what R is, that's going to be the power delivered to the load um, for maximum power transfer. It's going to be how many watts is the maximum that's possible. 
All right, so let's go and start to deal with mesh one first, which is right here. And we see that it borders a three milliamp source. So that tells us right away that this is three milliamps, right? Which is three uh, times 10 to the minus three amps. You know, one thing you notice about the circuit is you've got milliamps everywhere and you've got kilo ohms. And I think I mentioned this in a previous problem. You can do however you want, but you know, I never like to mix, mix units around because eventually you're going to hit a circuit where the units don't work right when you have me mega ohms and kilo ohms and ohms or milliamps and, and microamps or something running around. And if you don't convert them, you're going to get the wrong answer. So what I always do for every problem to eliminate that possibility, when I write my equations, I just, I don't even worry about kilo and mega. I just, I expand everything in the base units. So here I'm going to deal with 3 times 10 to the minus 3 amps. When I talk about this, I'm not going to write 4 down, I'm going to write 4,000 down. Because you want to deal in those, in those basic fundamental units and then you'll always get the right answer. Um, eventually, you'll hit a problem where uh, they trick you up and they'll give you a, 10 milli, a millivolt source and a 10 volt source here. And if you're not used to looking at the units, you'll mix those units together and get the wrong answer. Because you, you, know, you just have to have compatible units. So mesh one is trivial because that's what it's equal to. So that's good news. Now let's go and work on uh, mesh two, this guy right here. So what you're going to have is right here, you're going to have, uh, since we're walking around this way, it's going to be I2 minus I1 times uh, 4,000. So for right now, I'm going to leave it as 4K to remind myself that you know, I'm not just going to leave 4 there. I'm going to write 4K there to remind myself it's 4,000. And in just a minute, I'm going to expand it all out and multiply, right? Now let's get up to the 8K. It's going to be I2 times 8K. Again, I'm leaving the K in there to remind myself that it's 8K. I'm not going to use, I'm not going to use 8 as I propagate down. I'm going to expand it to 8,000 in just a minute. Now when we get over to, to the 20 uh, kilo ohm here, I'm going down. So it's I2 minus I3 times 20K. And then here I'm going through this voltage source from positive to negative. That's a drop. So I keep it as 10, positive 10. And that's equal to zero. So I have walked around this path uh, and, and there we go. So what I want to do is, so since I know that mesh one is so trivial, I want to just go ahead as I expand and simplify this just to substitute in for I1 because I know it's so trivial and eliminate one of my variables. So what I'm going to do, switch colors, okay? And first, I'm going to kind of put a little bracket here and just kind of expand this out. This is going to be uh, 4,000 I sub, whoops, one more zero, 4,000 I sub 2 minus 4,000 uh, times I sub 1. I sub 1 is 3 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm just kind of expanding what this, is, what this guy is right here so that I don't have to rewrite the entire block just to put this down. All right. So when I simplify this stuff in the next line, what I'm going to have is 4,000 I sub 2 minus. When you do this multiplication, you're going to get 12. All right. And then here I just have uh, plus 8,000 I sub 2. Notice I'm writing everything out. Over here I've got 20,000 I sub 2. I have to continue on to the next line. Here's a minus sign, so it's going to be minus 20 thousand I sub three and then I have plus ten and then the whole thing's equal to zero so that's one equation there it looks um, kind of ugly but it's going to shape up nicely once we simplify terms so what we're going to have here uh, there is no I1 we've already substituted for it I2 we're gonna have the four plus the eight that's gonna give us the twelve all right, and then we have 20. So really when you look at it, it's 28,000 here plus four is 32,000. So 32,000 I sub two, put a comma there, right? And then for I three, we just leave it alone, minus 20, let's keep it clean here, 20,000 I sub three, like this. And then we have negative 12 plus 10, that's gonna give you negative two, move it to the other side, it's gonna be positive two. So what we have is 32,000 I2 minus 20,000 I3 is equal to two. That is a keeper equation because it's totally simplified and it basically represents mesh two. Um, it basically represents mesh two. So what we wanna do next is we wanna write an equation for mesh three, which is this guy right over here, okay? 
So what we're going to do next is start up here at the 10 volts. So let's go ahead and do mesh three here. 10 volts, we're going from negative to positive. That's a voltage rise, so we count that as negative 10. We get to the 20, it's gonna be I3 minus I2. So it's gonna be I3 minus I2 times 20K. I'll just leave it as 20K right now, it's a shorthand. And then we get to the top, it's gonna to be I3 times this. So it's gonna be I3 times 2.5K. All right, now when we get to the 10K, it's I3 minus I4. So it's gonna be I3 minus I4, 10K is equal to zero. So that is the entire loop for mesh three. Um, so let's go ahead and simplify that. Let's see what we can get. Let me switch colors a little bit to make it a little bit clearer. So we're going to have negative 10 plus, here we have 20K, so 20,000 I3 minus 20,000 I sub two. Over here we have plus 2.5, actually don't write it as 2.5, write it as 2,500, because this is kilo ohms. So 2,500 I sub three, like this. And then we need to continue on to the next line like this, plus right here, 10,000 uh, I three minus 10,000 I sub four. And the whole thing's equal to zero. All right, so let's go ahead and simplify everything. All right, so let's look at I sub twos. Here's an I sub two, negative 20,000. There's nothing else in there in terms of I sub two, so it's gonna be negative 20,000 I sub two. Okay, here's 20, here's 30, and then here we have 2,500. So that's 32,500. Uh, 32, so what we have is 32,500 zero, zero, I sub three. So that takes care of those variables. And then finally we have the I sub four, so it's minus 10,000 I sub so four, and then for numbers, all we really have is the 10, There's the, that's it. So we move it to the other side, and the right-hand side is gonna be equal to 10. So that is a keeper equation. So we have negative 20,000 I sub two plus 32,500 I sub three uh, minus 10,000 I sub four is equal to 10. I know it looks a little bit ugly because you've got big numbers, but that just comes from the resistors. You can't really get around that when you deal with problems that have a lot of weird resistances, you're just going to have to deal with that. So we have an equation for mesh two, we have an equation for mesh three. The only thing we're missing is an equation for mesh four. And once we get that done, then we can basically solve this whole problem, right? So notice what we have is we have 10 kilo ohms. So when we, when we go through that, it's gonna be I4 minus I3. So let me go to our last board here. So this would be for mesh four. So it's gonna be I4 minus I3 times 10K. Let's just leave it like that for now, times 10K. And then when we walk through this, we're going through a voltage drop of 10 volts. So we track that as a positive 10. And then we go through our load resistance, finally I4 times five plus I4 times five. And that's, that's the whole loop. So let's expand this out, 10,000 I sub four minus 10,000 I sub three um, plus 10 plus, uh, actually I made a mistake right there, look at that, that's a five. That's not five, it's 5,000. So make sure you put, uh, leave it as 5K there. And then here it's going to be 5,000 I sub four equals zero, right? So equals zero. Now let's go ahead and simplify everything and just kind of add everything up. What we're going to have, there's no I2s anywhere, so let me go ahead and switch colors real quick. It's going to be negative 10,000 I sub three. I four, it's gonna be 15,000 I sub four. That's it, the only thing we have is 10, so we'll put it on the other side and make it negative 10. So that is our equation. Now that's a keeper equation also, so let me asterisk that. So here we have a complete set of equations because we already know what I1 is equal to. And we've already used it in substitution. So the real keeper equations we have are the asterisk equations. We have three variables, uh, I2, I3, and I4. We have three equations. Here's the first one, here's the second one, and here's the third one. 
So again, if you construct your matrices and solve it, you have the A matrix with the coefficients on the left, the B matrix with everything on the right, and uh, solve that using inverses that we have talked about many, many times before. Then what you're going to get at the end of the day when you solve it is you're going to have I2, I3, and I4. And the matrix that you're going to get as a result of that is 0 0.000277. 0 0.000344 and negative 0 0.000438 and this is in amps. That's in amps. So very small currents flowing around. Notice the reason they're such small currents is because all of these resistances in the circuit are all in the kilo ohm range. So they're large resistances. That's why these, this current is so small. So what we're trying to find, don't forget, is we're trying to find the power delivered to the resistance that we put in there, that maximum power transfer resistance. We know what I4 is equal to now. We actually got a negative number, but that just means that, that this current's flowing in the opposite direction. So it doesn't really matter. The value of it's what's important. Um, and so to calculate the maximum power transfer, P max is I4 squared times R. I4 is, and you can just stick that negative in there, 0 0.000438 squared times 5,000. Notice it doesn't matter if your current's negative or positive because you're squaring it. So P max, when you do that multiplication, you're going to get 0 0.000959, and the unit of power is watts. So that's the answer in watts, or you can move the decimal one, two, three, four, five, six places and get 959, since you moved it six places, microwatts, because micro is, is 10 to the minus six. So this is the answer, right? This is the answer. The first part of the problem was just giving you a circuit and saying, hey, what value of load resistance do you need to hook up to this thing to, count, to deliver maximum power to your load? Right? That's what we started with. So what we do is we remove the load and we try to find the Thevenin and resistance of our circuit. So we notice we have a pretty simple circuit with lots of constant sources, so we remove them appropriately and we just back calculate through all the series and parallel arrangements and we figure out, actually it's right here, we figure out that uh, it's 5,000 ohms, 5 kilo ohms. That's going to result in maximum power transfer. So to find out how many watts are actually delivered, we take that 5,000 ohms and we stick it in the circuit because now we know what it needs to be. And we solve that circuit appropriately using mesh currents, getting all of our equations in order, just like we always do. And this basically tells us how much current's flowing through that resistor. So I squared R gives us the value in watts. Now this has kind of been done using bulletproof straightforward ways. You know, you calculate the resistance, you put it in the circuit, you calculate the current through it, you find the power. And that's always true. But if you remember back from, from a couple of sections ago, I also told you that in general for this maximum power transfer business, it was, it was also equal to V Thevenin over uh, 4 times the load resistance. I, I told you that this was also true. So what I've done is solve it this way for you. But alternatively, another way to solve it, which is exactly the same answer, is going to be, you already know what RL is, it's 5,000 ohms, that's what it, the load resistance should be. If you find the Thevenin voltage, you could just stick it in this equation and you'll get the answer also. To find the Thevenin voltage, you have to go back to this original circuit. Remember, what is Thevenin voltage? It's the open circuit voltage across terminals A and B. So you would have to take your load away because remember, we're analyzing the circuit without a load, find the Thevenin voltage, right? And then you would have open circuit between A and B, and you would have to solve this circuit using mesh currents or something and figure out what the open circuit voltage is. That would be the Thevenin voltage, right? And then you would stick that Thevenin voltage in here and square it, divide by 4 times 5,000 ohms. That would also give you 959 microwatts. It's the same answer. So there's always multiple ways to solve a problem. I mean, that's true in almost any class. I mean, so what I'm doing is teaching you the way that makes sense to me, there's other ways to do it. You can go ahead and do this yourself and just show yourself that this equation works and that you're comfortable with it, and that's good too, because you never know what you might need on an exam. So make sure you understand this. Maximum power transfer, I've tried to impress on you, is an important topic. We're going to come back to it later. When we get into capacitors and inductors um, and, and sort of describing how the resistance of a circuit behaves when you have those other components, we're going to revisit maximum power transfer. 
But what you're going to really find out, really big picture, I'll just give it away, is that when you have more complicated circuit uh, elements, and when you have AC running around with you know sine waves for your sources instead of constant, you know DC like we have here, you basically calculate the Thevenin and Norton equivalent circuits very similarly to what we've done here. It's a little different, but it's basically very similar. So once I'm teaching you all of this, you file it away and you remember and you're really good at it, then later on when we get to more complicated circuits with inductors and capacitors and alternating current, then the basic idea is the same. The basic idea for the Thevenin is the same. The basic idea for the maximum power transfer is the same. So everything we're learning here is going to be directly used by you later on as well. So make sure you understand it. So that's all we have for maximum power transfer. Follow me on to the next section where I'm going to teach you a little bit about what we call superposition in circuit analysis. And I think that might open your mind and uh, impress you a little bit as well.